What I'd like for you to do right now, I want you to think about your dream because I'm in a room full of dreamers. Think about your dream right now. I want you to think about it and envision it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me share something with you. I do not believe that any of us have dreams that were not given to us for the purpose of accomplishing those particular dreams. And I want to share something with you that has changed my life. I started out, as was indicated by Jack, it's very humble beginnings. I don't know what that dream is that you have. I don't care how far-fetched it might appear to be. I don't care how disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream. But here's what I know, that that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible. Let's say that together, please. Say, it's possible. See, sometimes we can't say, I can do that. But what we can say, that it's possible that I can have my dream as we run toward it, as we work on it day in and day out. No one, ladies and gentlemen, could have convinced me when I started out just over six years ago working on my dream. And I want you to think about whatever your dream is. Because I was willing to take a chance, and most people won't do that. Most of the people that you talk to to try and bring them into the business, these are not risk takers. Most people have done all that they're ever going to do. They raise a family, they earn a living, and then they die. But people who are running toward their dreams, life has a special kind of meaning. And here's what I will share with you, that in the process of working on your dreams, you are going to incur, incur a lot of disappointment a lot of failure, a lot of pain, a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. But in the process of doing that, you will discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. What you will realize is that you have greatness within you. What you'll realize is that you're more powerful than you can ever begin to imagine. What you will realize is that you are greater than your circumstances that you don't have to go through life being a victim. As Jack indicated, I was born in Miami, Florida, in an area called Liberty City, in an abandoned building on a hard Nanolian floor with my twin brother. We were six weeks of age, we were adopted. When I was in fifth grade, I was identified as EMR, labeled, educable, mentally retarded, put back from the fifth grade into the fourth grade, and stayed in that category until I got out of high school. I don't have any college training, but I met a high school teacher who one day changed my life. I was waiting on another student, and when he came in, he said to me, young man, go to the board and write what I'm about to tell you. And I said, I, I can't do that, sir. And he said, why not? I said, I'm not one of your students. He said, it doesn't matter. Follow my directions now. I said, I can't do that, sir. He said, why not? I said, because I'm educable, mentally retarded. And he came from behind his desk and he looked at me. He said, don't ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. And that man, Mr. Leroy Washington, did something for me. He started planting seeds in my mind that enabled me to begin to dream as Dexter has been doing for you. And ladies and gentlemen, I started working on my dream. And most people don't work on their dreams. Why? For many years, I didn't. One is because of fear, the fear of failure. What if things don't work out? And the fear of success. What if they do and I can't handle it? The other thing is that most people, ladies and gentlemen, they get comfortable. They stop growing. They stop working on themselves. They stop stretching. They stop pushing themselves and they end up becoming very cynical about life and they throw in the towel on themselves and on their families and on their dreams. And the other thing is that most people don't feel worthy. What I'm doing now, I could have been doing years ago, but because I did not have a college education, because I didn't believe in myself, because I allowed other people's opinion of me 
to control my destiny. I didn't act on my ideas. So I applaud you for your dreaming, for your running towards your dream. I applaud you for believing in yourself because that's what life is about, stretching and challenging, looking for ways that you can begin to improve yourself. And ladies and gentlemen, as a result, of stretching out, of acting on my dream. And I don't know what that dream is for you. I can tell you that it's possible. No one could have convinced me that after just over six years, I will have my own book entitled Live Your Dreams. Just over six years, I will have five specials on public television. Just over six years, I've done motivational speaking for AT&T, Procter & Gamble, McDonald's Corporation, Xerox, IBM, just over six years. I will now have my own talk show that will premiere on Monday, Labor Day. I'm saying to you, your dream is possible.